Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Good evening and welcome tonight to Life in the North. Set up your Cornell notes with the inquiry question of what was life like in the North in the early 1800s? Over the next two nights, we will be looking at both the North and then the South and comparing how the Industrial Revolution impacted these two regions of the country um, very differently. So we'll just do a brief overview of geography and economics that we somewhat covered in class today. And then we'll look at... um, four categories of how the Industrial Revolution impacted life. We'll look at work, women, immigrants, and blacks. So let's start with what was the geography and economics of the North Lake. If you remember um, from our colonization unit, the North is both the middle colonies and New England colonies now that they are states. So if you remember, the New England colonies were rocky, cold, and most people lived in cities. Farms were small and people had to work really hard on those farms to make them productive. The middle colonies were the breadbasket colonies, great for farming of wheat, um, which will come into play here in the Industrial Revolution. When it comes to the economy, the North was a very industrial economy, meaning a lot of factories, manufacturing. By the 1830s, steam power dominated much of the northern United States. Steam powered allowed companies to build factories anywhere, not just on the river. So with hydropower, you had to be on a river so the wheel could turn. With steam power, you could build it way away from lakes, rivers, all of that. Second big part of the economy was the development of the railroads. This helped ship those raw goods from the middle region of the north, the places that were growing the food and wheat, and they could ship them into the New England area. So the New England area could focus on the manufacturing of the products and goods. The railroads made it very cheap and quick to ship these products back and forth. As a result, New England turns to manufacturing. So what was life like in these regions? If we look at the working life, Wages were really low, and people worked long, long hours. This was men working, women working, and children. As you see in the picture here, we have little kids working machines. They would wake up and be at work by about 4 in the morning, and they would work until 7.30 at night. They would get two breaks. They would get one for breakfast at 7.30 in the morning, get one about noon for lunch, and the rest of the day they were working. The conditions were dangerous. Very hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Windows didn't open, so you couldn't get breezes. Often there would be no windows, so there was poor lighting. Because of that poor lighting, there was lots of accidents. And unlike today, if you got hurt on the job, you were out of a job. They would fire you. They wouldn't take care of you. There was no insurance. You were just fired. You had to go find a new job, and it was what it was. But even so, these were still better conditions than what existed in Europe. Because of these conditions, though, workers started to organize um, unions. These unions would try to fight for better conditions, better wages, making it so the people working in manufacturing could have a better life. They would sometimes organize strikes, but in the early days of the strikes, um, you would face fines and or jail time if you walked out on your job to strike. There was no protection um, that if you went on strike, you could still get your job back once we negotiated an agreement. It was, you go on strike, you lose your job frequently. Women would often work in mills. If you remember from the other night, talked about low mills. That's just one example. They would work hard, often away from their family. If they were single, they would sometimes live at the factory. 
if they had a family, they were working for low wages, and they had to have this job to help put food on the table for their family. Because they weren't farming, they had to actually make the money to buy the food. However, women, you see this whole row, frequently they were not allowed to talk during that entire day. They were to focus on their job and do their job only. And because they needed these jobs, they seldomly went out on strike and stood up. At this time, women still don't have many rights um, throughout society. So going on strike often wasn't productive for women at this time. Third thing, the North sees a huge rise in immigrants or immigration. The two biggest regions that we see immigrants come from were Ireland and Germany. An immigrant is any person who enters a new country from another. During the 1840s to 1850s, over 4 million new immigrants came to the region, to the United States. Those coming from Ireland were trying to escape a potato famine. The potatoes all got um, diseased, and as a result, they were trying to escape to survive for their health. And in this time, about 1.5 million Irish came to the New York and Boston area. They would take any job, didn't care what the pay was. They just wanted a job to try to get a better life. They would live in slums. You see in this picture, it's a one-room house. And you see at least four, five, six people just in that picture. They would often crowd into these small places to live. Those coming from Germany were fleeing repression. They were trying to escape for their lives. They had a failed uprising. So those that were a part of that uprising wanted to escape get to the United States, again, for the promise of a better life. It was these German immigrants that brought the tradition of decorating a Christmas tree that many Americans still practice today. However, as a result of this, we get native, nativists rising up within the country. A nativist wanted less immigration, and they were focused on, they wanted native-born people only, or people born in America. They did not like all the immigrants because of two main re reasons. The immigrants would work for less pay, meaning if they worked for less pay, the people, the nativists, would either be out of a job or forced to work for less pay, meaning they have less take-home for their family. And two, because of prejudice. They didn't like the traditions or values of the people coming. Many of the nativists were Protestant Christians and they didn't like the Catholic Christians coming because they didn't agree with that religion and they were prejudiced and discriminated against those of the Catholic faith. We will see this in other forms of prejudice rise up with the blacks also. So in the north you have quite a few free blacks but just because they were free doesn't mean they were um, well off. Uh, they faced worse prejudice than the Irish and the German and the other immigrants coming to the country. As a result, even the highly qualified, highly trained um, blacks were forced to take um, low paying jobs that weren't all that great and had no opportunity for them to rise up. If you look at the map, you see in the north most of the uh, black people in the north were free. There weren't many slaves in the northern um, states. However, they were still discriminated, discriminated against um, hugely. Some did become successful. They worked hard. There was a handful that became rich in manufacturing. Some became lawyers. Some became actors. Some became scientists. However, these were the minority of the free blacks in the north. And when we get to, uh, like in the South, you'll see on the same map, there's not many free blacks in the South. They're almost all in some type of slavery. So finally, how would you describe life in the North in the early 1800s? You need to come prepared tomorrow to discuss that question, be ready to provide examples, and can you make connections between this life in the North and the inventions that we saw earlier in the week. How did those inventions lead to this lifestyle?
be ready to discuss those two main questions tomorrow in class. Have a good evening.